If you're looking for a place to go and find some trophies, this is the place to be in the charge of trophies. If you're on Xbox and need some gamer score, come over here, I'll help you get some more. My name is Gen Z Retro, the host of the show, gaming news and reviews and all you need to know. Because the weekend is finally here at last, sit back, relax, enjoy the Trophy Achievement Podcast. He's back! Hello my fellow Latter DCs, Kenzie Redshaw here, back once again with episode 24 of the Trophy Achievement Podcast. Your one-stop shop for all the latest points, trophies, and of course those news stories and the latest rumours as well. I got those two the wrong way around, but anyway... You guys know how it goes, I go through the gaming news and then afterwards I go through the points and trophies and I've and because I haven't done I haven't done an episode of this podcast since the end of August because I've been so busy traveling elsewhere I have got not one not two but three juicy games all of which I believe a potential Game of the Year candidates. So, before we get into all of that, it is time to get into the big news stories, including, but not limited to, new, new, we've got news on Red Dead Redemption 2. We have got news on We've got we've got an a me we've got a very hilarious article here on video games being a category on Jeopardy. Last night at time of recording, I'm recording this on Thursday, so it goes up on the Friday. It's been a very well, I mean, there's been a lot of news regarding uh, Telltale games over the course of the last um, few weeks uh, over the last. few uh, week or two, and uh, there's a further, there's been further developments. Um, so I'll be keeping, I'll be uh, updating you guys on what's been happening there. News on Nintendo, Sony finally crack. They finally crack. Why have they cracked? We will find out very shortly. Mouse and keyboard support coming to Xbox One, Castlevania on PS4. New Death Stranding footage as well, and news on the next Community Day on Pokemon Go. And as we are approaching the end of the month, we are going to find out what free games are on offer in the Battle of the Free Games for October 2018. And of course, in the points and trophy section, I've got, like I said, I've got three very juicy games. I have got Marvel Spider-Man on the PlayStation 4. I will be going through the trophy list for that. I will also be going through the achievement list for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And with Forza Horizon 4 coming out next week on Game Pass for those of you on Xbox, you can get, you can pay essentially 10 quid a month and you get Forza Horizon 4 on launch day. Man, I'm excited. So, before we get into all of that, I'm just waiting for my next rental to come through from Boomerang Rentals. Big shout out to those guys. As always, packages start from as little as $3.99 a month. If you sign up today, you get a 21 day free trial and you get three free game rentals. You can play the latest games for as little as £10 a month. Once you start renting, you're gonna start saving. There are no late fees, you can keep the game as long as you like, or keep it forever at a discounted price on the online store. That is boomerangrentals.co.uk, the best place to rent your games. No gaming screw up this week, so let's just get right into the news! So, I think the biggest news story of this week is... Sony... Finally enabling cross-platform play. Finally! After months and months and years of saying, No, 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 no. We will never enable cross-platform play. We will only focus on our exclusive titles. They finally cave in to the pressure. 
They caved in under the pressure and they finally give us cross-platform play. Took you long enough, Sony. Five years we've waited! For the players? I don't think so. More like, for the money. Hello, I like money. Not now, Mr. Krabs! So, here we go. PS4 users playing Fortnite will soon be able to play seamlessly across their PS4 and non-Sony consoles, as well as play with friends who use different consoles, according to a post on the Sony PlayStation blog. This is a big and surprising move, given that Sony has been very, very, very vocal about not allowing cross-platform play for Fortnite players across multiple consoles in recent months. But it seems Sony may have buckled under pressure from players who have been demanding cross-play a cross-play feature since Fortnite launched in 2017. Following a comprehensive evaluation process, Sony Interactive Entertainment has identified a path towards supporting cross-platform features for select third-party content. The Sony PlayStation team writes, We recognize that PS4 players have been eagerly awaiting an update, and we appreciate the community's continued patience. Pfft. Lack thereof in this case. As we have navigated through this issue to find a solution. Uh, the issue being you didn't want to have cross-platform play to begin with. So I don't see what the issue was. All you had to do was just say we will do cross-platform play. We just need to work out how we're going to do it. And there won't be long to wait. According to Sony, an open beta will begin on September 26th. Which just so happens to have been... Yesterday, at time of recording. Again, like I said, I'm recording this on Thursday, so I get it up for Friday. Which will allow cross-platform gameplay for PlayStation 4, Android, iOS, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, Microsoft Windows, and Mac operating systems. Sony says it's rolling out cross-play in open beta, so it can maintain a good quality experience. Interestingly, the blog post also suggested that other games might be coming to cross getting cross-play support in the future as well. Give us Rocket League, dang it! There are a lot of multi-platform titles that could benefit from this big time. Gonna be, all you're going to need is the cross-play servers. And there you go. You've saved yourself a truck ton of money. Mind you, you will still need those exclusive um, servers for things like, you know, your Sony exclusives and your Microsoft exclusives. Anyway. Finally! Finally, Sony, welcome to the 21st century, took you long enough. I mean, they were focused primarily on their exclusives and burying Microsoft into the ground. Oh, how the tables have turned. Today, I'm pleased to announce Xbox One backward compatibility. Three years ago that happened. And Microsoft have just been building on the momentum ever since. Unlike PlayStation Now, when it comes to Xbox Game Pass, you download the game, boom, you're good to go. With PlayStation Now, you've got to stream the game for X amount for X amount of hours. How are you supposed to complete Jack and Daxter in three hours? It cannot be done. And the worst part about it, you have to you have to play. You have to pay for the game AGAIN just to play it on PlayStation 4 because they don't have backwards compatibility. Like... They don't have technical backwards compatibility because you can't play... You can't put PlayStation 3 discs into... But with Xbox, if you've got an old copy of Knights of the Old Republic into your Xbox One, BOOM! Good to go! So, speaking of Xbox, mouse and keyboard support coming to Xbox One. You'll soon be able to use a mouse and keyboard in Xbox games that support it, as Microsoft partner with Razer. There are many fundamental differences between a console and a PC, but one of the most obvious, from a gaming perspective, is that the primary controller on a PC is the mouse and keyboard, which is very beneficial for accuracy in uh, FPS games, for example. Although it's common for PC gamers to use console-style 
a console style controller, many don't, preferring the greater accuracy and precision of a mouse and keyboard, especially for shooters. Mm hmm. Many consoles going back to at least the Super Nintendo have offered the option for a mouse. The idea was never caught, has never caught. Although it that although that could all be set to change on Xbox One. Xbox boss Phil Spencer made the announcement as part of last night's Inside Xbox episode, during which he announced the XO18 preview event in Mexico City. However, he clarified that support would not be added automatically to every game, but the developers would have to add the option separately. Fair play, gives him a bit of time. This is also to prevent mouse and keyboard users from having an unfair advantage with developers expected to use matchmaking to ensure separate matches. Ooh. So we're going to have separate matchmaking for mouse and keyboard and controllers. So they're going to be in separate matches. Fair play. Fair play to them for that. According to Spencer, one of the main reasons for adding the option is to encourage genres, such as real-time strategies, that do not work well without a mouse. Could we be seeing StarCraft on Xbox pretty soon? Only time will tell. Anyway, although the first game to gain mouse and keyboard support will be the preview version of the free-to-play online shooter Warframe in October. Any modern keyboard or mouse should work with Xbox One, but, the, my, but Microsoft will also be producing their own official accessory in conjunction with Razer. The short clip below shows a glimpse of the accessory, which seems to be a lap board that also allows you to use, that allows you to use both a mouse and keyboard when just sitting on the sofa. Hmm. Handy. More details, including support for other games, is expected to at the XO18 event. We'd expect a version of Microsoft own Microsoft owned Age of Empires for the Emperor, for the Empire, for the entire world. <laughs> Or is that Age of Mythology? At the very least, plus support, or perhaps even a new sequel to Halo Wars 2. Now that's just made things very interesting. That's just made things very, very interesting. Right. I stumbled across this article and I found it pretty hilarious. It's on GameSpot. Here we go. Video games was a category on Jeopardy and the contestants didn't do so well. This is basically a repeat of what happened with the Leroy Jenkins episode of Jeopardy. How did nobody get World of Warcraft? Anyway. Tonight's episode of the long-running TV game show Jeopardy featured a video games category, and the contestants struggled. In the hard-to-watch clip below, the contestants get almost every single question wrong or don't answer at all, as they do their best at coming up with answers about video games. Before watching the clip below, test yourself and see how you would do. Here are the questions. This company's Infinity allowed you to play characters from The Incredibles and Cars, name a few, for $200. What is Disney? Boom! Morrowind and Skyrim are iterations of this venerable set of games for $400. What is The Elder Scrolls? You've got to give the answer in the form of a question. Here we go. A gaming story of... A, game, a big gaming story of 2018 is Fortnite, this genre of game where the winner is last shooter or last team standing for 600. What is Battle Royale? In the classic video game Joust, contestants were placed upon these for birds. Ah, oh, fridge. Ah. Oh. 
placed upon these birds. What are eagles? Making your future, make your future fighting goal, leader of the Red Legion in the second iteration of this bungee game. What is destiny? Here we go. I got the 800 one wrong. Here we go. What category still in play, Evelyn? Video games 200. This company's infinity allowed you to play characters from The Incredibles and Cars, to name a few. Evelyn? What is Pixar? Nope. Jordan? What is Disney? Disney is right. Yes. There you go! Video 4. Morrowind and Skyrim are iterations of this venerable set of games. Jordan? What is Dragon Age? Nope. Nope! What is The Elder Scrolls? Jordan, back uh, to you. Thousands. Make your future fighting Gaul, leader of the Red Legion, in the second iteration of this bungee game. Jordan. What is Halo? No. Oh, of course. Evelyn or Nancy? What is Destiny? Jordan, back to you. 800. In the classic video game Joust, contestants were placed upon these birds. They were put on ostriches. Now ostriches? Clue. We're doing huh. well with video games, aren't we? No, we're not. The gaming story of 2018 is Fortnite. This genre of game where the winner is last shooter or last team standing. And that is Battle Royale. We're going to take our second break. Come back to start Double Jeopardy right after this. For shame, they only got one right. They only got one out of the five. I would have got, I mean, I got four of those. Anyway. And speaking of Fortnite. Season 6 has finally arrived. And alongside it, developer Epic Games is rolling out patch 6 for the game. Arrival of a new season means there's a new, there's new Battle Pass content to unlock, as well as some changes to the game world, and how you play the wildly popular Battle Royale title. To give us a complete breakdown of everything new and or changing with the latest updates, Epic has released the Fortnite 6.0 patch note, which you can read below. The headliner is the new Battle Pass, which delivers 100 levels and over 100 new rewards, according to Epic. It is available to purchase for in-game for 950 V-Bucks. You can also choose to just stick to the free battle pass, but some challenges and rewards are exclusive to the paid tier. The other big new addition is pets, which allow you to adventure around the island with an adorable friend by your side. Don't kill the pets, please! Think of them! Think of their parents! Think of the children! Great for something like that ridiculous Lovejoy wife from The Simpsons. Let's see, uh, beyond these new additions, Epic has also introduced a consumable called Shadowstones and the updated map with new locations such as the Floating Island, Cornfields, and Haunted Castle. Where's the alliteration, guys? Come on! In terms of weapons, the Impulse Grenade, Suppressed Machine Gun, Light Machine Gun, Bouncer, and Remote Explosive have all been thrown into the vault. Ah! Ah, dang it! However, all of the weapons and items added to the vault as part of the patch V6.0 are available to use in playgrounds for now. Take a look at the full patch notes, yada yada yada, blah de blah de blah de blah de blah. Weapons and items, yada yada yada. Gameplay, blah 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 blah. Bum bada bum bada bum. 
Ooh, storm circle changes. Hello. Okay. Safe zone four. Wait time reduced from 90 to 80 seconds. Showing time increased from 60 to 70. Safe zone five. 90 to 70, 40 to 60, safe zone 6, 60 to 30, 30 to 60, safe zone 7, wait time reduced from 45 to 20 seconds, showing time increased from 25 to 50 seconds, oh my goodness me, radius increased from 1250 to 1650, safe zone, oh my goodness me, this is not going to end well, oh my goodness me, well, That's gonna be fun. So, next up. Telltale. Now, I've reported previously on uh, Telltale Games being in a bit of trouble. They've laid off all but 25 members of their staff. And we're unsure on what's happening as far as the future of the final season of The Walking Dead. Is concerned. Season, um, episode 2 just released on Tuesday. But as of yet, we are unsure on what's going to be happening. But here we go. Telltale is working with multiple partners to finish The Walking Dead the final season. Nothing is guaranteed, but there's hope. Right. By all appearances, the closure of Telltale Games meant the end of the incomplete Walking Dead the final season. But there is some faint hope among fans that the studio would be able to finish it. But Clementine act voice actor Melissa Hutchinson and designers Emily Grace Buck and Michael Kirkbride both strongly suggested that it wouldn't happen. In a tweet released ahead of tomorrow's launch of The Walking Dead Final, episode, final Season episode. Um... Ahead of uh, the final season, Chapter 2, however, Telltale suggested that it might still happen. Hi everyone, we have a Walking Dead update for you. Multiple potential partners have stepped forward to express interest in helping to see the final season through to completion. While we can't make any promises today, we are actively working towards a solution that will allow Episodes 3 and 4 to be completed and released in some form. In the meantime, Episode 2 will release tomorrow across all platforms as planned. We hope to have answers for your other questions soon. That's a long way from carved in stone, but it's more than fans had to hang on to a few hours ago. It's not surprising other students would be interested in the property. The Walking Dead is Telltale's flagship series, and the studio's collapse has focused attention on it. It won't migrate. It won't mitigate the damage wrought by, uh, by Telltale's sudden shutdown. But if someone like Paradox or THQ Nordic can pick it up, maybe bring on some of the original development team, at least temporarily, and deliver the balance of the final season, it will at least bring closure to the series that really put Telltale on the map. Oh boy. Here we go. Now, I've played through seasons one, two, and three, and I've got the complete. I've got the collection that includes the Michonne mini series on my rental list for Boomerang Rentals, which will mean more gamer score for me. <sighs> oh boy. This is definitely going to be interesting. Wait and see what happens. And we'll take it from there. But for now, there is hope that this final season will be finished.
and I really hope they do manage to finish it because this is something fans have been waiting for for a long time. To see this through right to the end. But we'll wait and see what happens. Alright, so here we go. So, so, yeah, yeah. Right. Red Dead Redemption 2 will require a massive 105 gigabytes of hard drive. What? 105 gigabytes of hard drive space to install on PlayStation 4. Fridge my life. First spotted by Rockstar Intel, US retailer Target revealed the figure through the image of the PlayStation 4 Pro Red Dead Redemption 2 bundle seen below. While file sizes can vary across platforms, Xbox One owners should expect to clear a similar amount of hard drive space. And what it says here as well... What it says here as well, I mean, wow, the artwork looks pretty good. It says, America, America, 1899, the end of the Wild West era has begun. After a robbery goes badly wrong in the western town of Blackwater, Arthur Morgan and, and, Vanderlind, gang, and the Vanderlind gang are forced to flee with federal agents and the best bounty hunters in the nation massing on their heels. The gang must rob, steal, and fight their way across the rugged heartland of America in order to survive. As deepening internal divisions threaten to tear the gang apart, Arthur must make a choice between his own ideals and loyalty to, to the gang who raised him. Outlaws for life. Okay. How cool was that? October 26th it comes out. Here we go. The image also revealed... don't like it when these adverts get in the way. The image also revealed Red Dead Online will support up to 32 players, putting it slightly above GTA Online's 30 player limit. Meanwhile, select online content will be exclusive to PlayStation 4 for 30 days, according to the box. The $400 US, the $400 US PS4 Pro bundle was revealed earlier this week and is currently available to pre-order through Amazon. Red Dead Redemption 2 will be playable entirely in first person when it's released for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One on October 26th. We recently spent two hours in the world of Red Dead 2 and were blown away by its depth, polish and amazing attention to detail. 
Red Dead Online, meanwhile, la will launch as a public beta in November. For that, for more, check out the yadda yadda yadda, blah de blah de blah de blah de blah. So. Haven't got much left to cover, but we'll stick with uh, PlayStation 4 for now, as we've got Castlevania coming to PS4 next month. The Castlevania Requiem Collection is bringing them to PS4 in upscaled HD. Guys, up versions of Castlevania Symphony of the Night and Castlevania Rondo of Blood are coming to PlayStation 4 on October 26th. Hey, same day as Red Dead Redemption 2, how's about that? Konami announced today the digital-only Castlevania Requiem Collection comes with both of the classic side scrollers and goes for twenty dollars. The collection will, the collection can also be pre-ordered for seventeen dollars through October twenty-sixth. So saving yourself three dollars if you pre-order it. Rondo of Blood was originally released in nineteen ninety-three for the PC Engine. Symphony of the Night followed in nineteen ninety-seven on the original PlayStation and is still loaded for putting the Vania in Metroidvania. Yeah, you can thank Super Metroid for that one as well. Its world design is especially well regarded, deservedly so, seeing as it how iconic its castle map flows perfectly, even when you flip it upside down. What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets! But enough talk! How about you? How quotable is that line? Rondo of Blood was re-released via the Wii U's Virtual Console, and Symphony of that was available as a PlayStation 1 Classic on PSP, PS3, and PlayStation Vita, along with an Xbox Live Arcade port, which is backwards compatible on Xbox One, by the way. But Konami says the Requiem Collection delivers the best versions of both games. Both games are the originals emulated for the PlayStation 4, with several updates that take advantage of the new hardware. A PlayStation blog post reads, this concludes, this includes 4K or 1080p upscaling, multiple high resolution backgrounds, different rendering options such as smoothing and full trophy support. Requiem also takes advantage of the DualShock 4 controller. Whenever you pick up an item, you will hear a cool little chime. Which just so happens to be... Yeah. Do that little speaker there. The Requiem Collection will also launch on the same day as the second season of Castlevania's Netflix animated series. Season 2 spans 8 episodes, twice as many as the first season. Once again, Richard Armitage as Belmont, Graham McTavish as Dracula, and James Callis as Alucard. Ooh, so Alucard. Die, monster! You don't belong in this world! The Castlevania games have been some of the best worlds in games and some of the best box art. Check out the community, yada yada yada, blah 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 blah, Lords of Shadows 2, blah de blah de blah, not interested. So, let's see. New Death Stranding footage reveals Troy Baker as the antagonist, eh? Ooh, interesting, let's see what that's all about. Last night, or this morning, at the Tokyo Game Show, Hideo Kojima gave us a new, yet still very weird look at Death Stranding. There's not a whole lot of context to it, and honestly watching it just made us more confused than before. But hey, it looks imaginative and cool. <laughs> Norman Reedus' character Sam is carrying a man through the world when suddenly a cloaked figure wearing a golden mask, played by Troy Baker, stops them in their tracks. It seems they may have some history and the man with the golden mask summons a weird black gooey creature with a similar golden mask. Truthfully, it's hard to put into words what we saw, but it looks like an intro to a potential boss battle. If we had to guess, we'll likely see the combat in the next reveal, potentially at the Game Awards in December. That could either come in the form of this boss battle or something else but it seems like 
the marketing is slowly building towards that. For those out of the loop, Death Stranding is Hideo Kojima's passion project funded by Sony after he was ousted from Konami. We don't particularly know what the game is about other than something incredibly untraditional and likely never seen before in the gaming space. Whether that's through gameplay or narrative devices, we likely won't know for quite some time. Kojima has been vocal about creating a story that connects life and death itself with gameplay twists and respawning and dying and more. While it, while it hasn't been discussed much, Kojima also noted that there's a multi multiplayer or social aspect to Death Stranding. It'll be used more as a way to bring people together as opposed to a PvP element that pushes players apart. Death Stranding has no release date right now, but many speculate a late 2019, early 2020 release. It'll release exclusively on PlayStation 4. Right, a couple of Nintendo articles here. Because well, after all, Pokemon Go is owned by Nin uh, Pokemon is owned by Nintendo. After all, anyway, the Nintendo Labo ve vehicle kit is a total riot of cardboard creativity. So, the vehicle kit is the best of Nintendo's cardboard creations to date, combining brilliant builds with genuinely excellent and long-lasting gameplay. Pros: building brilliant builds and the best Labo gameplay yet. Cons. Gameplay is great, but could still be more detailed. Price, £60, 8 out of 10. Labo still isn't Lego, but it's getting closer. If the first two iterations of Nintendo's mix of craft and console games showed promise, then it's a case of third times the, the charm with the brilliant vehicle kit. Not only is the craft side more challenging, varied, and rewarding than on the variety kit or robot kit, the accompanying Switch game is also a far more substantial and engaging. What previously felt like a proof of concept has flourished into a genuinely brilliant toy, and one that will keep both big and little kids entertained for weeks. The builds here, as the name suggests, are all vehicles. After a brief introduction to the principles of Labo, the first thing you build is a Toy-Con pedal. This is then combined with the other, more substantial builds, Toy-Con Car, Toy-Con Plane, Toy-Con Submarine, and last but not least, Toy-Con Key. <laughs> that actually rolled off pretty well! Let's try that again. First thing, that, um, a Toy-Con Pedal. Then this is combined with the other more substantial builds, Toy-Con Car, Toy-Con Play, Toy-Con Submarine, and last but not least, the Toy-Con Key. <laughs> it works! It works! Each, as the name suggests, is a controller for a different mode of transport. The smallest build, Toy-Con Key, is a lovely flourish of Nintendo Magic, a cardboard chassis for a Joy-Con that slots into and activates the different vehicle's controllers, and the IR sensor cleverly recognizing what Toy-Con is attached to. After all, you can't, drive a, you can't drive a car, plane, or submarine without turning a key. <laughs> In total, the builds should take you around six to eight hours, though add a few more hours to that if you're being assisted of an if you're being assisted of an excitable little helper. To the uninitiated, building with lava is a surprisingly relaxing way to spend the day. The box the game comes in is stuffed with a mind-boggling array of cardboard shapes that you have to gently punch out from their respective sheets of cardboard. Turn on your switch, pop it on the table, pull up a comfy seat, follow the instructions on the screen, and get folding. Well. Very interesting, how's about that? So, here we go. Pokemon Go Beldum Community Day officially revealed. A week ago, a leak from Niantic's official assets suggested that Pokemon Go October Community Day would feature a fan-favorite psychic and steel-type Beldum. Now, Niantic has officially revealed that this is true, meaning players will be able to add a shiny Metagross to their collection. For those unaware, October's Community Day is slated to occur on October 21st, 
beginning at 11 a.m. Pacific time and 2 p.m. Eastern time. Currently, the special move learned when Metang evolves into Metagross is unknown, but it is likely to be Meteor Mash. This Pokemon Go move would elevate Metagross's role in the metagame, as well as give the Pokemon a viable Steel-type move. Of course, it's also worth mentioning that we don't know if there will be a spawn increase in Veldums, but it's incredibly likely to occur, as it has on previous Community Days other bonuses as seen below, including quarter hatching distances as well as the typical 3-hour lures. Moreover, it seems that Matang's evolved up to an hour after the event ends will still learn the special move. That final bonus will be incredibly helpful as Pokemon Go players won't have the stress have to stress to evolve Beldum within the parameters of the event. Players can instead focus on getting that shiny Beldum or perfect IV Beldum in order to evolve the perfect one. While it's not likely to have a gimmick like the Sunglasses Squirtle, which was very cool by the way, a shiny or powerful Metagross is reason enough to play this forthcoming community day. Although this October community day is shaping up to be one worth remembering, it's not the only thing going on in the mobile ARG Pokemon Go. ARG being augmented reality game for those who don't know. With Mewtwo recently transitioning into regular tier 5 to a regular tier 5 raid boss, plenty of players may be struggling with bringing the psychic type behemoth down. For, for, for those players, here's a guide on how to beat and catch Mewtwo. So yeah, Mewtwo was originally... With Deoxys replacing Mewtwo as the current EX raid boss, many Pokemon Go players now have their chance to battle and catch the legendary psychic type Mewtwo for the first time. However, it is still no pushover. It is still considered one of the strongest Pokemon in the mobile ARG. Below, check out how to take down this formidable foe. Right. Mewtwo has a raid boss CP of 60,540, 18,750 CP, and a max CP, max capture CP of 2275, no weather boost, 100% IV, and 2844, windy boost, 100% IV. Theoretically, this Pokemon Go Legendary could be beaten with three well-prepared players, but most would be better off going against this powerful boss with at least six. Pure Psychic Type, the, the Pure Psychic Type has access to the following moves as a Tier 5 Raid Boss. Cycle Cut, which is quick, which is a quick Psychic Type move. Confusion, quick Psychic Type move. Psychic, Charged 1 Bar Psychic Type move. Focus Blast, Charged 1 Bar Fighting Type move. Ice Beam, Charged 2 Bar Ice Type move. Thunderbolt, Charged 2 Bar Electric Type move. And Flamethrower, Charged 2 Bar Fire Type move. Perhaps the most important move to note is Focus Blast, as it eliminates Mewtwo's number one counter, Tyranitar. Players who players also want to be prepared for either Ice Beam or Thunderbolt. This change up in the legendary's moves make it more of a generalist. This means the type advantage is key against Mewtwo, perhaps more than most tier 5 raids. Psycho Cut is its quickest energy building move, so players need to pay attention to that to know how fast it charges, how fast its charged move will fill. Psycho Cut plus Psycho Blast is the legendary strongest move set. With Confusion representing a smaller threat, a Psychic, flame, psychic Flamethrower not being seriously viable charged moves, Psycho Cut plus Psychic still makes Mewtwo the strongest psychic type attacker in the game, however. One thing players can do to turn the tide is to make sure the weather bonus to use the weather bonuses effectively. Rainy and foggy weather will be the most useful, as the former empowers bug type counters, and the latter does the same for dark type counters, Tyranitar. Avoiding avoid facing Mewtwo in either cloudy weather, especially if you're attempting to counter with a Tyranitar or Sunny, as those seriously increase the deadliness of the Legendary's moveset. The best, the best Pokemon and moveset to counter Mewtwo are as follows. 
Tyranitar, Bite and Crunch. Mewtwo, Psychic, Psycho Cut and Shadow Ball. Gengar, Hex and Shadow Ball. Houndoom, Snarl, Snarl and Foul Play. Sizer, Fury Cutter and Excisor. And Shift Tree, Faint Attack and Foul Play. Mewtwo loses a lot of viable counters thanks to the following three moves. Ice Beam, Thunderbolt and Flamethrower. Ice Beam would be an absolute wrecking ball against Dragonite. Thunderbolt drops Gyarados in ranking. And Flamethrower, however weak, can do some serious damage to backup counters such as Shifty. Especially, essentially, Houndoom, Sizer and Shift Trees are glass cannons against his legendary Pokemon. Once players manage to defeat Mewtwo, they'll have to catch it. However, it's worth mentioning that its catch rates have has also been nerfed, as it transitioned from EX Raid boss to Tier 5 boss. Still, with the use of it, it, this guide, players should be able to beat Mewtwo and eventually catch the Psychic Legendary. Pokemon Go is now available in select regions for Android and iOS. Last piece of news, we have got some new games coming to Xbox Game Pass for October. What are those games going to be? Let's find out. Microsoft has announced the new additions to Xbox Game, the Xbox Game Pass catalog for Xbox One for October. And they include some big game titles. All subscribers will get to play seven more games in October, including the brand new launch Forza Horizon 4 at launch on October 2nd. Man, I'm excited for that one. Other games joining the Xbox Game Pass catalog in, in October include Wolfenstein A New Order, Metro 2033 Redux, Westerado Double Barreled, Lego Indiana Jones, Shantae Half Genie Hero, and Split Second, which was actually a game with gold recently. As you might have noticed, some of these titles are Xbox 360 games, and these are backwards compatible games that play on Xbox One. There are more than 100 games in the Xbox Game Pass library, including titles like, included but not limited to, Halo 5, Halo the Master Chief Collection, Fallout 4, Rocket League, Hitman, Sea of Thieves, and Rise of the Tomb Raider, among many, many others. Xbox Game Pass costs $10, 10 US dollars a month, but you can get started with a free 14-day trial. Unlike Netflix, you download the games instead of streaming them. So you might need an additional storage solution if you're hoping to pick up a lot of Xbox Game Pass games. Talking of Xbox, um, what was um, what was it? Um, what was it? I believe the yeah, that's what it was. Now, because PlayStation, because PlayStation won last month, it's onwards for them. They have the advantage. Heading into the final third of the year. So what are what are we going to be playing for free in October? Let's find out as it's Xbox versus PlayStation for October 2018. And as I've said, because Sony won for September. It is time. It is time to bring in. It is time to bring in what games they're going to be playing that are going to be free for this month. So. Just found something that might be useful. Anyway, let's see. Here we go. So the games we've got are Friday the 13th, Laser League, Knowledge is Power is still there, Master Reboot, The Bridge, Rocket Birds 2 Evolution, 2064 Read Only Memories. I mean... The only really notable titles there are Friday the 13th and Laser League. Those are the only ones that are really of note. Xbox, however, what do we have? 
We've got Overcooked and Victor Vran for Xbox One and for Xbox 360. Stuntman Ignition and Hitman Blood Mini. Now, Over what? Overcooked is a fantastic game. It's chaos, it's hilarious, and all round brilliant. Now, I've already played, I've already got Overcooked. But if anybody wants to have a crack at it with me, I'll be more than happy to join in. So, this month goes to Microsoft. 7 3. Microsoft cannot be caught. Microsoft cannot be caught. Meaning, they are the supreme bringers of free games throughout 2018. And we've got two months left to do. So, so here we go. Uh, just found a nice juicy little article on Kingdom Hearts 3. All-star voice cast revealed. Returning actors announced for Kingdom Hearts. Parts 3. So, here we go. The cast is as follows. Josh Gad as Olaf from Frozen. Kristen Bell as Anna from Frozen. Idina Menzel as Elsa from Frozen. Jonathan Grof as Kristoff from Frozen. Zachary Levi as Flynn Rider from Tangled. Donna Murphy as Mother Gothel from Tangled. John Ratzenberger as Ham from Toy Story. <laughs> yeah, Ham is just brilliant. That's Mr. Evil Dr. Porkchop to you! Wallace Shawn as Rex from Toy Story. Tate Donovan as Hercules from... Hercules? Kevin R. McNally as Gibbs from Pirates of the Caribbean. Tony... Tony Anselmo as Donald Duck and Bill Farmer as Goofy. And you've got Haley Joel Osmond, who you may remember from Sixth Sense and AI. I see dead people. Will reprise his role in the game as Sora. Man, I'm excited. Honestly, cannot wait. January 29th is when Kingdom Hearts 3 comes out for Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Square Enix, can we please have the Kingdom Hearts series on Xbox? Please! We will love you forever if you do this. Please! Pretty, 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 please. Now, anyway. Let's not dilly-dally anymore because I have got a game that has 51 trophies, a game that has 63 achievements, and another game that has 55 achievements. So I've got 2,000 gamer score to get through and of course 50 trophies to get to that elusive platinum trophy and that means only one thing, ladies and gentlemen! Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting! Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting! Yep, it's points and trophies time. And as you saw there, we've got Shadow of the Tomb Raider first. So, let's get through these 63 achievements. Archaeologist, complete an artifact collection, five gamer score. Komote, Komoteyama, no, Komotelama, I should say, Komoteyamas. Miyama for some, Miyama can see retro. <laughs> so, let's, here we go, Komotelama, pet five llamas. Completionist, reach 100% completion. First steps, purchase a skill. New heights, 
complete a climb after finding the overhang climbing gear. Tables turn to kill five enemies while they are searching for Lara. Thanksgiving, shoot a turkey with a flare round. Ask it. And those are worth five gamer score. Right. This next lot's worth ten gamer score. Asking price, buy an item from a merchant. Better equipped, get three pieces of equipment. Chain gang, perform three serpent, perform serpent's fury three times. First blood, perform a stealth takedown with a mud covered wall, from a mud covered wall. Good Samaritan, complete eight side missions. Gunslinger, perform three headshots in three seconds. Oh, no pressure then. That one should be easy enough. Kill ten enemies with focus, well, while focus is active in the moment. Last known position, lose the enemy ten times. Look, over there! Bing! Who's there? Kill three enemies while they are distracted. Made to endure, take down ten enemies while endurance is active. On the go, craft special ammunition 50 times. Playing with fire, burn two enemies simultaneously. Point of interest, learn of five interesting locations from civilians. Resting places, uncover three crypts secrets. Ten gamer score. Sixth sense, hunt and kill ten enemies while perception is active. Surprise, suckers! Perform five eagles talon takedowns. Thread the past, restore five vestige outfit pieces. To the nines, restore and equip a matching vestige outfit. P total party kill, kill five enemies with friendly fire. Now, how are you going to go about doing that one? That's going to be interesting. Treasure hunter, find and open all con conquistador treasure chests. Treasures from the past, decipher a monolith. Untold riches, gather 40 gold ore. Up to the challenge, complete five challenges. Zoologist, complete, collect 20 critters. Now this one's stackable. Complete sh deadly obsession. Complete Shadow of the Tomb Raider on Deadly Obsession difficulty. With enough hard work, I reckon you could 100% this. Or in PlayStation's case, Platinum it. That one's worth 15 gamer score, by the way. Right. Like a Shadow. Stealth takedown, 25 enemies for 15 gamer score. And this, this, this next lot's worth 15 gamer score. Makeshift arsenal, fully upgrade a weapon, marksman, perform 20 headshots with the bow, one with the jungle, complete shadow of the tomb raider with one on one with the jungle difficulty, rite of passage, complete shadow of the tomb raider on rite of passage difficulty, smart and resourceful, complete shadow of the tomb raider on smart and resourceful difficulty, specialized, earn all skills in one category, that's, nah, 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 nah. that's not a knife, that's a knife. Fully upgrade the knife. Nice job on getting a Crocodile Dundee reference in there, folks. Well played, Microsoft. Uh, Square Enix in this case. I don't care, I don't know. Fully upgrade the knife. Underwater Archaeologist. Collect five underwater artifacts. 20 game of score for Legendary Hunter. Hunt and loot five rare animals. Steli Hunter. 20 game of score. Complete and complete three challenge tombs. Dr. Croft, 25 gamer score. Help uh, complete all artifact collections. Help thy neighbor, 50 gamer score. Complete a side mission. Tomb Raider, complete all challenge tombs in the main campaign, 50 gamer score. <laughs> Bit of narcissism in there. And Kawait the Adventure, 100 gamer score for just com finishing the main storyline. And we've got, ooh, a nice set of secret achievements as well. So, here we go. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11, game, 11 achievements worth 15 game score. Back to where we started. Return to Petiti. Dia de Muertos. Dia de Muertos. Remove the dagger from the Temple of the Moon. <laughs> Dia de Muertos. Day of the Dead. Family ties. Free... Free Unuratu from prison. Fire of life. Enter the Temple of Life's inner chamber. Heart of the Serpent. Find the mission of San Juan. Path of the Stars. Decipher the Path of the Stars. 
Recipe for disaster. Bleh, recipe for disaster. Survive the flood. Survival instincts. Defeat the Empress Jaguar. The chosen one. You are the chosen one. Find the silver box of Ixchel. The hidden city. Find Petiti. The underworld. Get out of the Cenotes alive. Twenty game score. Heart and minds. Retrieve Manko's necklace. Beast of Legend, 25 game score. Defeat the Nahual. I believe I can fly. <laughs> Very clever. 25 game score. Rescue Hakan from the cultists. Unwelcome guests, 25 game score. Rid, get rid of the pillagers outside of Kwakyaku. And Queen of the Damned. Make an unlikely ally for 50 game score. But of course I can't forget about you trusty Sony fans. So here comes number two. So here comes points and trophies. Number two. Points and trophies. Trophy achievement hunting. Points and trophies. Trophy achievement hunting. So I'm going to go That's a lot of trophies. So, here we go. We've got secret achievement here. Bronze up to silver. Bronze secret trophies we've got with great power. Pay respects at Ben Parker's grave. Wing it. Traverse across the city rooftops. Tombstone takedown. Defeat Tombstone. The Six Assemble. Complete Act 2. Sting and Smash. Defeat Scorpion and Rhino. Stay positive. Defeat Lee. Spy Hunter. Get spectacular or better in a Taskmaster drone challenge. Snappy Dresser. Wear five new Spider-Man suits. Short Fuse. Get spectacular or better in a Taskmaster bombing ch Taskmaster bomb challenge. Okay. Shock and awe defeat Shocker. Pigeon Hunter catch all of Howard's pigeons. Ninja! Get spectacular or better in a Taskmaster stealth challenge. Knocking down Kingpin defeat Fisk. Hug it out. Knock out 10 pairs of enemies with trip mines. Grounded defeat Electro and Vulture. Fists of Fury get spectacular or better in a Taskmaster combat challenge. Endgame def complete Act 3. Demons Emerge complete Act 1. Challenge Finder completes every Taskmaster challenge in the city once. He's just a bit of a fixer upper. Complete all optional projects in the lab. Silver Trophies. Schooled complete all the corrupted student missions. Mercenary Tactics take down each Sable outpost. Master of Masters defeat Taskmaster. In a Sanctuary take down each de Demon Warehouse. Back in the Slammer, take down each prisoner camp, and all the King's men take down each Fisk hideout. Now, onto the main trophies. Scientific method, can craft your first upgrade. Sticky and tricky, can chain four unique tricks before landing. Spider sensible, perfect, do perfect dodge 10 attacks. Spider-Man about town, greet 10 citizens. Sightseeing, photograph all the landmarks on the map. Science for the win. Yes, yeah, science! Craft 15 upgrades. Research and R&D. Complete all research stations. Overdrive. Complete 10 vehicle takedowns. Lost and found. Collect 5 backpacks. King of Swing. Complete a level 1 traversal benchmark. Hero for hire. Perch atop Avengers Tower. <laughs> nice. Your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Complete all side missions. Cats out of the bag. Collect a black... Cat collectible. Born to ride. Ride the subway five times. Arachnophobia. Perform 75 stealth takedowns. And stay down. Complete a level one combat benchmark. Awesome coverage. All surveillance towers activated. Ace the base. Complete all objectives in a base. Complete all... Neighborhood watch. These are the silver trophies now. Neighborhood watch. Complete all faction crimes in a district. Cat Prince, track down black cat. Backpacker, collect all backpacks. A suit for all seasons, purchase all suits. And you've got two gold trophies here. 
Superior Spider-Man unlock all skills and I Heart Manhattan 100% complete all districts. And then B greater is the elusive platinum trophy. To simply collect all the trophies. That game I can platinum. So, and now we've got one last game to get through, and it's Forza Horizon 4 for points and for points and trophies game number three. Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting. Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting. Yeah, you're probably getting tired of that uh, little jingle uh, transition <laughs> at this point but anyway here we go so i'm going through these again in ascending order of gamer score the following are worth 10 game gamer score they're, they're classed here as rare achievements because i mean for crying out loud the game isn't even out yet but i'm just going to go through the entire achievement list anyway here we go there's no i in team take part in your first forza thon live event spring interaction qualify for horizon spring it's no problem qualify for horizon winter Pride before the fall. Qualify for Horizon Autumn. Optional extras. Apply your first car mastery. Accomplished driver. Reach level 20. Special edition. Get your first Forza edition car from a wheel spin. Hit the jackpot. Spin your first super wheel spin. Overachiever. Complete a season PR stunt and receive a reward. Welcome to Britain. Arrive at the Horizon Festival. Auto barn. Find and restore your first barn find. I feel the need. The need for speed. Reach speed trap hero level 10. Ooh! Ooh! These are gonna be good. First love. Buy your first car from the auto show. Pilot's license. Reach danger sign, he danger sign hero level 10. Apex predator. Reach speed zone hero level 10. Do you know what DK stands for? Reach level 10 in the drift run. Drift King! Week complete. Complete a Forza Thon weekly challenge. First time adventurer. Complete your first, time, first team adventure. Well seasoned. Complete a season championship and receive a reward. Purple split. In rivals, beat a rival without receiving a dirty time penalty. At, at one with the car. Apply every car mastery available for a single car. 20 gamer score. Next. Apply 50 car masteries for Master of Men. Reaping the rewards. Complete a race with three or of three or more laps at the Goliath in a Forza Edition car. The Tortoise and the Hare. Complete. Complete a PvP. P, complete a PvP showdown race in an X. In an X class and a D class car. Hmm. Catch me if you can. Complete the for festival drag strip in hot in a hot hatch in under 25 seconds. <laughs> Clever. Record breaker. Get 258 miles an hour on a speed trap in the Bugatti Veyron Supersport. Yes! They are aware the Veyron Supersport can get up to 267 or 268. Anyway. Ground force. Get three stars at a danger sign in a vehicle from the truck's car type. Never tell me the odds. Win a race in the Peel 50. Team the Monster. Complete a race in an S1 class rally monster. Coronation Trickin. <laughs> Bank a skill chain of 195,300 points or more. Sounds doable. The Spirit of Adventure. Reach level 5 in Racing Team Adventure, Games Team Adventure, and Anything Goes Team Adventure. Certified Adventurer. Qualify for a League in Ranked Team Adventure. Crowning Achievement. Purchase a Castle. 
Test your might. Mortal Kombat! Complete the trial. Antique Restorer. Find and restore 15 bar finds. Colossus of Rhodes. Reach round 10 in the Horizon Road Racing Series. Jolly Cooperation. Complete five Horizon Life Co-op races. Oh, I'm only human after all. Complete five P P <laughs> Let's try that again. <clears throat> I'm only human after all. Complete five PvP races for 20 gamer score. <laughs> for 20 gamer score. Teamwork makes the dream work. Complete round three of a Falls of Thorn live event. Muddied. Reach round 10 in the Horizon Dirt Racing series. Bouncy, bouncy, having such a good time. The flouncy, chouncy, bouncy, flan. The flouncy, chouncy, bouncy, flouncy, flan. The bouncy, chouncy, flouncy, rouncy, fun, 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 fun. Uh, but the most wonderful thing about Tiggers is I'm the only one. I'm the only one. Arr. You're welcome. I'll see myself out. I live my I live my life. Dot dot dot. I live my life in the fast lane. Twenty game of score. Reach round ten in the horse. Oops. Try again. I live my life in the fast lane, trying to gain the score. Reach round 10 in the Horizon Drag Racing Series. Moonlighting, reach round 10 of the street scene. Horizon Fashion Week, unlock 100 clothing items for your character. 20, uh, official Horizon board game. <laughs> Smash all 200 bonus boards. An illustrious career. Finish 40 different Horizon Story chapters. Whatever next, complete every showcase event. Taking the grand tour, view every beauty spot. The noisy cartographer, drive down every road in Britain. Go the distance, yes, Hercules reference! Win a race at the Colossus, the Gauntlet, the Titan, and the Marathon. Welcome to a new Horizon Qualify for the Horizon roster for 30 game of score. 30 game of score also for life of the party. Take part in 20 Forzathon live events, completing at least one round in each. Stunt Hero, get three stars on every PR stunt for 50 game of score. Star Centurion, get 100 stars in, in Horizon stores. 50 game of score. And the last but by no means least, 50 game of score. Horizon Superstar, gain superstar status by reaching level 200. I'm gonna have so much fun with this game when it comes out on Tuesday. Can. Not. Wait. In the meantime, that is it for this week's edition of the Trophy Achievement Podcast. If you enjoyed what you saw, as always, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be baptized into following this channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the latter day Saints notification squad so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. You all know the drill by now. I have got Spy with the Dragon on the left. I have got my podcast playlist on the right. No Tom and Jerry or F1 this weekend, but rest assured, guys, next Tuesday, on top of me playing Falls of Horizon 4, Rocket League Champ Rock Rocket League Season 5 is here. So with that in mind, I will see you guys very soon. Enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out and stay faithful as always. <laughs>